Hello. In this podcast, we're going to be talking about making some herbal potions or ritual libations. For these, we're going to use two herbs that are fairly commonplace. You've probably heard of them. For the first potion, which is Chase the Green Fairy, we're going to be using Wormwood ab Absinthium. And for the second one, which is the famous Maybole Punch, we'll be using Woodruff. Now, I was going to take you out in the garden to show you the plants in particular so you could see exactly what they were. But this being England and the summer, there's a gale blowing outside and having recorded it out there once, you couldn't hear a word I was saying. So what I've done is I brought a few bits of the sprigs of the plants in. Now, the Wormwood family has got a big family and we grow most of the plants that are relevant to us. But this is the one we want for Chase the Green Fairy, which is Absinthium Wormwood. And it's a beautiful plant. It's particularly relevant to us because this plant is aligned with Lilith, who is the uh, goddess of our coven. So it's particularly useful. We grow quite a bit of it because our Majesty uses an awful lot of this in ritual incense that he makes for uh, hearth rituals. Now this plant is a three-year-old plant and we've had a fantastic harvest from it this year, despite the fact we've had an absolutely rubbish summer. But when you want to harvest this for either incense or for this particular potion, what you want is the top two or three inches of the plant with the new leaves, the new flower heads. Those are the most potent. But this plant oh, it smells absolutely wonderful. It's a really powerful plant. And this plant um, is wonderful. You should grow it if you get a chance. I have seen them growing wild in this country. They're pretty rare. This year, for the first time in about 20 years, I saw one growing in a particularly picturesque spot by the river at Wimbledon but it's the only plant I've ever seen in 20 years, so please don't take them from the wild if you find them. You can get these from specialist herb growers. If you're in Glastonbury, have a look outside Starchild. They often have small plants grown by a local nursery. Sometimes you can get them there, or most herb specialist garden centres will be able to supply you with them. And the other herb we're going to use for the Maybowl Punch is this one, which is very tiny, so you can have a job to see it, unfortunately. This is woodruff and it's a tiny ground cover plant. You, it does grow in this country, um, mostly in the south of England, and it's a ground cover plant that grows in broadleaf woodland that is particularly sparse so it gets a bit of light. If you're going to grow this, grow it in pots because it will take over your entire garden if you don't. It's a beautiful plant and this, is, this plant we want to use in the spring for Beltane, which is where maple punch is drunk. And in spring, it's a carpet of tiny white flowers. It's a beautiful plant. When dried, it smells like new mown hay. It's beautiful. Grow it. Give it a go. It's fun to grow these things. Right, so let's make some herbal potions. Now, the first one we're going to make is Chase the Green Fairy. Most people just call it Green Fairy. And some of you may well have heard the term before. It's a term used by people who like to drink absinthe. Now, absinthe is a drink that goes back perhaps 500, 600 years and it's brewed by monks on the continent and it is powerfully strong stuff. It's brewed with a recipe of I think about 140 different herbs, all of which are secret of course, but we do happen to know that the main ingredient of absinthe is this wormwood absinthium, which is the plant we saw outside. Now in most parts of the United States absinthe is illegal and in this country, distilling anything is illegal, so we're not going to be doing that. What we're going to do is make up a mixed potion, sort of a uh, lazy man's way to make absinthe, really. Now, what we need to do is we need three very large fistfuls, handfuls of the fresh herb. Now, as I explained outside, you want the top two, three inches of the herb, and you need quite a big handful. Then that's the main ingredient which is going to give you the effect. And here I want to tell you that the active ingredients in Wormwood Absinthium, there are two. There is absinthine and the other is thione. Um, they're sort of classed as a narcotic stroke 
um, analgesic and they are quite powerful but in the doses we'll be doing they will give you an effect but they're not going to be terrible. Um, the thione which is one of the ingredients in this, it's an, um, actually a volatile oil which is in part of this, is, um, can be addictive but to do that you would need to drink several bottles of this every day for several months. Um, you would be a raging alcoholic apart from anything else and I don't think you would physically be able to do such a thing. So in moderation, in ritual, several large glasses of this is not going to do you any harm and it will actually be quite, give you quite surprising results. So now how do we make it? We've got our big three handfuls of this fresh herb or failing that if you haven't got time when the herbs are fresh you can dry them but if you're going to dry, use dried herbs and this is the same for almost every concoction you'll ever need a herb for. Dried herbs are more powerful. Basically the water content of the herb is gone. So if you're going to use three big fresh handfuls, if you're going to use dried, you use one. It's a third because it is approximately three times as strong. Now you need to use the have find a, the way to release the absinthe and the thione in this plant is with alcohol. You could use any alcohol at all if you liked, but the best one is the purest form of vodka. Now, some vodkas are quite expensive. I mean, you could go to Tesco's and buy your own cheap Tesco's home brand vodka. won't be the same. It's not as nice. There are two ones I would recommend. Smirnoff Blue Label, excellent. Beautiful vodka, nice and smooth, very strong. But I personally prefer Polish vodka. Zabrowska is probably the best vodka. It's been brewed since, or distilled I should say, since about the 14th century and to it they add a leaf of bison grass. So if you wander, I think you can find, I think you can get it in Tesco's or most major big supermarkets will sell it. It's called bison grass vodka and you'll, there'll be a slight tinge to it, it's not perfectly clear. So having got your vodka, you then need to put it inside one of these large kilner jars, preferably not with all this stuff in, um, making sure it's clean, put the whole bottle in. Then you put in your three big handfuls of wormwood absinthium. Seal it up, give it a good shake and then leave it. Put it on your kitchen worktop, not in sunlight, not in warmth, just anywhere handy. And then every morning and every evening give it a very vigorous shake up. After 10 days what you then need to do is to get yourself a big bowl and you pour through a sieve the entire content, sieving out the worst of the large pieces of plant which you pummel through with your fingers. Then you've got your liquid which is still going to have loads of bits in. So cover your sieve with some mus muslin or a pair of tights and do it again. Pour it all through, let it soak through, squeeze out the muslin, squeeze out the tights. You might need to do that two or three times before you get what you think is a clear looking green liquid. Beautiful. Then bottle it back up in the bottle of the Zabrowka vodka that you bought, um, having washed off the labels, because we need to know, and uh, write on it, whatever it is, so you know exactly what's in it, and you'll have a nice green liquid. Then put that in a cupboard, leave it alone for one full moon. Don't touch it, don't disturb it. When you've had your full moon, bring out the bottle and you'll see at the bottom sediment, probably a quarter, half an inch of the bottle. Uh, it's quite an art then. Those of you who have wine buffs will be used to pouring the wine off sediment. So pour off the vodka into a bowl very, very gently so that you don't disturb the sediment. And all you get is the sediment back in the bottle. Chuck that away, wash out the bottle carefully, pour the vodka back in. Now you will have lost a certain bit, it'll probably come to about here. Just top it up with water, that's fine. Print out, I know you've all got computers, print out a nice label. Here for instance, nice fairy looking, and she's green. Put the, what it is you've got, you've made on it, and here, is your bottle of Green Fairy. Beautiful. I'm not going to waste some of this by having it now, but when do you use it? How do you use it? Well, it's not just a simple matter of just drinking it like you would normally. This is very powerful vodka, so it's strong vodka. It'll blow the back of your throat off. What you need to do is get yourself a tall glass, pour a small measure of perhaps a half an inch, an inch in the bottom of a tall glass. Get yourself a metal tea strainer, put it over the top, add some ice cubes in the top of the strainer, 
then on your preference get iced water or iced lemonade pour it slowly over the ice cubes and you will probably put five times as much of that as you do the vodka or green fairy if you've done it well and you've done it properly and the iced water is truly iced water having gone through the sugar you should end up with a milky looking liquid much like Perno does when you add water to it now this is something you would use in ritual mostly I would suggest anybody who's in a ritual circle can use this can drink this one large glass two large glasses usually plenty enough and when you do if you're all doing it you can then it's an aid to scrying it can really heighten your it's like um, I don't know, bourbon, scotch, gives you that sort of feeling of being slightly intoxicated, but it's a clear intoxication. It doesn't affect your brain, and so you can really focus on it. And it's a fantastic stuff for scrying. Or if you're going to do ritual journeying as a group, perfect, ideal. Give it a go. It's great fun. It's safe. It is alcoholic. Don't go mad with it, but have fun with it. It's great. Right, now we're on to our second herbal potion, and this one's great fun. Um, this one is designed for Beltane, so enjoy it. It's easy to make, anybody can do it, piece of cake. And the, what you end up with is this, which is Maybowl Punch. Uh, this is a North European uh, concoction, really. It probably comes from Bavaria. The first recipe was um, 16th century, but there were writings about it in the 12th century from Northern Germany. And it's a perfect way to celebrate Beltane. Now, the, the active ingredient is, is woodruff, and woodruff has an ingredient called coumarin. And coumarin is a relaxant. It's fine, it's lovely. It's not dangerous, it's not a narcotic, but it is a relaxant. And so what we do is we go out and we gather about 100 grams of woodruff. Now, if you're doing this at the right time for Beltane, at that time, woodruff, weather permitting, is a mass of tiny white flowers. Brilliant. Pick the lot. You want about three inches of the top of the plant. It's a fairly, fairly short plant, so you want the newish leaves, and if there are flowers on them, great. Use those as well. Then get yourself a large kilner jar, or preferably even larger than this, really. You, as long as it's sealable, you can use a large plastic jar, but glass is nicer. Plop them all in. That's 100 grams of the woodruff. Then get yourself a litre bottle of sweet white wine. Don't buy Tesco's 2 99 rubbish, buy something fairly decent. And also a bottle of dry white wine. Now first of all, pour in the, the sweet white wine and allow it to, to settle for a minute or two. Then you want half a bottle of dry white wine. The other half you can just drink as you go and have some fun. Pour it in, seal it, give it a good shake then what you need to do is make sure you really have mashed up the plant, break them up a bit so that you, the, the goodness can come out of them, and then just leave it overnight in a cupboard. It doesn't need to be outside or inside, anywhere at all, nowhere warm, just leave it overnight. The next day, as with the uh, Green Fairy, sieve off all the green gulpy bits, you don't want any bits of plant material left in it, squeeze them all out through the muslin so it's as good clear as possible, bottle it back up, put it in the fridge, chilled. That is then usable that day. It, I mean, because it's got plant matter in it, I would advise you to drink it that night. Don't make it three or four nights in advance, make it one night in advance. And basically, it's everybody has it in, in the hearth, everybody would drink several glasses of it. I mean, it's like drinking nice wine, but the coumarin, which is the active ingredient in it, lowers inhibitions and allows you to have some fun so be aware men get rampant women get raunchy it's what it's designed for it's designed for beltane drink it have fun enjoy yourselves thanks ever so much